Bucks bug out survivor caught me with a brew there. Nothing new. What is new is this here. It is Corinthia. It's an underquilt from a hammock. Now it is a synthetic G loft insulation, really small dimensions. And I've chosen to go with Corinthia because it is a good brand name. I've chosen to go with a synthetic because my down quilts were wetting out in the winter and losing its insulation. I trusted the name Corinthia because of the Defence Force sleeping bag. So this should be a good product for your hammock. But is it? That's what we're going to find out. Now I'm going to give you all the facts first, which is its weight, its size, where you get it from. Then I'm going to show me putting it onto a hammock. It says to use a standard hammock. Well, that could be standard 15 foot or a standard eight foot. These are the kind of hammocks which are eight foot, which were displayed in the presentation online on Corinthia's own site. There was a guy pictured in what looked like an eight foot. So I'm gonna replicate that. And it's a very, very simple case of putting it on. It has very few modifications since I've had this. I've just cut the end of the elastic put a couple of loops in, added a couple of carabiners and I've had it out for the night and I don't know whether to tell you the results and my findings for that. Let me clarify what I mean. To me what a review is, is to tell you everything about the product regarding all the facts, like I said, the weight, size, where I get it from, colours, they're facts. At the end of a review video, I can give you my opinion. Do I think it works? Do I like it? Would I buy it again? Now, they're the opinions. So, I did once get accused by someone that all I do is give opinions. It's not true. Every video I do includes all the facts with a roundup at the end of my opinions. So that is what a review is. Other people come on my channel and will say, why don't you just use one of these instead? I can't possibly review a product with a different product. To me, it stands to reason, it stands a mile out. But a lot of people have lost the art of knowing what a review is. There is a camp video, a night camp where I took this out and you'll find out exactly what I think of this. And I'm going to leave in the description box below a link that you can follow the night camp of this bit of kit. And a lot of underquilts are going through this phase at the moment of trying to redesign the head and foot end closure system and I wish they wouldn't but it's all here for you the insulation is a G loft the size is two meters by 120 it is 1200 grams on the scale and it's made in Europe made by Corinthia who also make the DEF 4 and DEF 6 sleeping bags as, as well as the Survivor one and many, many, many more. This is the only one they do for a hammock.
Corinthia does come with a compression sack and a really good quality one. The thing is with compression sacks, the clue is in the title, it needs to be able to compress whatever is inside it. To be quite honest, it only compresses it an inch or two at best. We did a compression bag video, um, I think it's called sleeping bags or winter bags, facts only. And you can see a difference between a military stuff sack or compression bag is the compression bag is at least twice as big as it needs to be for ease of packing. Then you use the compression to get it down to size. The actual size of this is not a lot bigger than just say an ordinary stuff sack. Wish companies would give proper compression sacks, but they don't. Probably something to do with trying to save a bit of money here and there. Let's just hope they've given enough insulation for it to be warm and not skimped there either. The only modifications I've done to my quilt is it just had one piece of cord that came through a cinch toddle here, ran from left to right, I got a pair of scissors, cut that, and I relaced into the same cinch toddle. If we come to the original section, the cord runs through the channel in a huge loop to accommodate a range of different size hammocks. I just need to cut, cut that. Just want to quickly introduce a little bit of heat to this. As we're looking at it, this is the right of the quilt. This is what I just cut off. On the right, it's coming back and threading through the cinch toddle that's already on the quilt. Really easy to do. Little stopper knot. Just got one on the other side to do. I replicate that. And now I have an independent loop just like the other side. And I have four independent corner suspensions. Okay, that was simple. We just cut the cord that was formerly just one all the way through the channel, runs round in a circuit in a ring. Cut that and a very small modification so now i have independent left and right suspension all four corners i can just get my little loops that i've made and connect straight into the hammock itself clip let's get one in there reverse get the other in reverse the clip and then i've got equal sides left and right it's quite a simple format that is well known if you are familiar with putting under quilts on. So it's on and it was really simple to connect. I've only ever seen one YouTube video, a guy who used one and he used it in conjunction with a pad to get it through a winter. Jesus, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to. It should be fit for winter straight out the bag. You know when you unbox it unfortunately i haven't got a lot of light where i am but this is the opening here of the under quilt at the foot and head end it just needs tightening up you can see the hammock is up here and then if we pan down this is the bottom that needs closing that's quite a big gap to close up because it is a big rectangle and i need it sort of half moon shape now this is the channel that runs the foot and head end like this all the way around only it doesn't go all the way around it stops in the middle here and has this weird arrangement of it coming out there's a good five inches missing here where it usually a channel would be and this cord would continue running in the channel like it does here you see, it just runs out a channel, comes to a cinch toddle, back into the channel. This is at the very, very bottom, then runs all the way up now. Such a weird idea. And what I've seen on YouTube, 
bless them. People get the cinch toddle, pull on this, and of course it doesn't cinch up. The material gets caught very quickly, so all you have to do is move the material up. Now I find it best to get your fingers behind the channel, push the material up to the top, keep pushing. Now perhaps you can get your cinch toddle and tighten up. Get this, squeeze the toddle, up she comes, and that should have closed the gap between the hammock and the underquilt. Last thing we want is dead air space, you know, where cold can get in through this area here. Let's have a look if it has closed that space up. Hammock straps, beaner, continuous loop, hammock, underquilt. This is the bit I need closing up here and I can get a whole fist in there and sure I could try and get that hole a little tighter which I'm struggling with. There's no draft tube, there's nothing other than this weird idea just leave the effing thing alone, don't try and come up with clever ideas, they just don't work. This idea should have been ditched at the drawing board, not put into production. We'll get to the insulation in a minute. Get the toddle and pull it further towards the tree, pull back like that, and it lifts the hammock. So let me lift it. I don't want it touching my backside, I still want a little gap, maybe a fist size, maybe two finger span. When you're looking at synthetics, you do want that gap. However, when you're looking into down feathers, whether it's duck down or goose down, you want that quilt pushed up against your ass and your back hard. And the way that has been designed with feathers is it has dual layer, the skin. And the first skin underneath your back, picture it like um, an oval or a rectangle that is smaller than the outside shell. And then when you stitch the outside and inside shell, no matter how much you get it tight on your back, it will always hang loose underneath with all them feathers all loose and very lofty. This doesn't have the loft because it's synthetic, so you need an air gap. Your body creates uh, the heat for that air gap. And if there's any bit of this setup where my heat is escaping and cold's coming in, it's game over. I liked the Corinthia because it was only 1.2 kilos. It does go into a pretty small stuff sack. It takes up less volume in the pack and I thought this was going to be a game changer. Now the insulation itself, do I think this is thick enough or good enough? Given the fact I've only used it half a dozen times, I'm not going to con condemn it just yet. But man, it is thin, it is thin. Corinthia do not give us a temperature rating. It could be summer, it could be winter. I was a little confused, so I did email. Corinthia got a lovely email off a young lady who worked there. She said, it'll be fine through uh, right down to zero and beyond, provided you, you have a good sleeping bag. I use this with a top quilt and I was cold. Perhaps it does need a sleeping bag, I don't know. But so far, I'm struggling getting this working. I'm struggling knowing what it is I should be doing. Bearing in mind, I have lots of under quilts. I am not a novice to this. I have synthetic under quilts. I have budget under quilts. I have homemade DIY under quilts. I have goose down quilts. And I also have duck down quilts. I'm not a novice to putting quilts on, believe me. I think that is as tight as I can make it. Let's see if I have a suitable gap. I should have there. I think I've got a suitable gap between my backside and the quilt, probably an inch.
Although I've only used this quilt just a handful of times, what I will say is the insulation, even on a warm summer's night, which then chills, you know, three, four in the morning. God, I had a cold ass, cold ass, cold back, cold neck. Feet were lovely and warm though. Uh, yeah, so the insulation had a very, very low fail point, even in the summer. And I remember I was told it would get me through a winter. So I automatically assumed the head and foot aren't closed up enough. Now I'm in the hammock, let's see if it is closed up enough. Right, that's as tight as I can make that. Thing is, when you're lying in your own hammock, you can't see the foot end unless you put a camera there or you get somebody to take a picture of it and see if it is sealed up sufficiently. And although it does seem to be sealed up sufficiently, the whole design of the foot and head end on that channel, you know, with the missing channel and the weird cinch toddle system means I think cold air is getting in and my warm air is escaping not to mention the insulation it is so thin here it feels like a jungle sleeping bag if you've had one of them so maybe i need a bigger air gap under my backside maybe that will help maybe a smaller one things i've got to experiment and try so let me try that let's give this a bigger air gap maybe a whole fist size between the insulation and my hammock there you know quite a big fist size gap and I'm gonna loosen off all four corners and I've tightened up the ends as much as I can there's nothing more I can do with that again come to these independent four corners and loosen and that should give me a big air gap Now I've tried with a small air gap and a big air gap. I've been playing with this underquilt for the past seven, eight days. It doesn't seem to make any difference. Half the time it, I may as well not bring it with me. Uh, I still have CBS, cold butt syndrome, which is very common in hammocks, but uh, a, a good underquilt should sort that problem out. This was quite an expensive um, underquilt by a trusted company. I thought it would do better. Now I do have budget underquilts and I do have very expensive underquilts. Now surprisingly the budget underquilt was simpler to put on and it did feel warm the minute I put it on but it had a joke temperature rating you know a winter one wasn't really fit for the summer so I doubled up on summer and winter put them together and that was in November yeah it got me through November and I think a joint price of two quilts budget was about 120 this was 150 and for a winter quilt I just can't get it working I got a cold ass now I dare say I'll have a cold ass um, if I try it tonight I tried so many variations getting the gap small getting the gap bigger having it totally baggy and loose having it really tight I even tried having the hammock absolutely flat as a board I've tried polyester hammocks with this I've tried nylon hammocks with this I have tried 11 foot hammocks with this I've tried 15 foot hammocks this is 8 foot I've tried it all I only wanted this system because it is compact, lightweight. I do have a whole video of when we took this out for the whole night and you'll see some of the issues I had and you can see me trying to sort out these issues in the middle of the night as well. A lot of people get very angry in the comments if I show a bit of kit that they were hoping was going to be brilliant and my honesty is a bit too honest and I say look it's not all it's cracked up to be people get very angry at me don't get angry at me for giving you the results and my findings get angry at 
the people who make it but i'm just going to load this straight into my pack i'm not going to bother with the stuff sack not that i would anyway and then that's us done Now I do have enough room in here for my sleeping bag. The cup kit is already inside. The tarp, I have water here. It would have been ideal. What is a YouTube review? A review is I take a product. I inform you of the facts, its color, its weight, its measurements, where to buy it. They're all factual things that can't be argued with. Then at the end, I'll give you an opinion, which is mine. You know how it fared for me, whether I think it's the best thing in the world, whether I think it's the worst thing in the world, whether you'd even need one. So this is a video for people who are contemplating buying themselves the Corinthia hammock under quilt and I wished somebody on YouTube would have made this video before I bought it but instead there were only two or three people who've made videos on this product and one was I think by Corinthia and then another guy he had an independent viewpoint and told me look Bex you're gonna need an air pad with this and alarm bells started ringing I'm sorry if you don't like the results on my findings but then again that's all they are my findings my viewpoints my opinions if more than one person is coming up with the same findings however perhaps this Corinthia hammock quilt is not fit for purpose. Happy trails.